Dragons were huge, dominating creatures, and medieval writers used to like to write about things that were huge and dominating and fiery. Well, if you think about work, sometimes work can be huge. It dominates a great portion of our life. And sometimes the people we work with can be pretty fiery creatures. In this video, we're going to look at three different species of dragons. Then in the next video, I'm going to cover ineffective fighting styles. And then in the last video, I'm gonna share with you tactful and professional weapons to win. Three of the most common perceived species are leaders, coworkers, and ourselves. Let's go through each one. I'm gonna start with leaders. In my workshops, when I ask attendees, what are some of the things that leaders do that make them appear to be dragon-like? These are the typical answers that I have gotten. They give poor direction, don't provide necessary information, show favoritism, don't follow through on what they say, set unrealistic expectations, when they procrastinate, don't resolve conflicts, or are inflexible. Well, I would agree that there really are some dragon leaders, but most of the time they're not. They're not as we perceive them to be. When I think back to when I was an employee, yes, I would have considered some of these very things mentioned the same. I would have thought the same thing. However, since 1990, I've been on the other side of the desk. And now I know why these things happen. I procrastinate maybe sometimes. Maybe my employees think I have unrealistic expectations. So I kind of want to take you behind the scenes on how things really look. Because like I said, Many of the dragons that you perceive who are management positions aren't really the dragons. The other part of my experience since 1990 is that I work with a lot of managers and executives and I hear their perspectives. So I understand this and I wanna help you understand. First of all, you would ask yourself, what school did this dragon go to? It's something to think about. And there are three things to consider. First of all, it's to consider their management style. In other words, different leaders have different views and different management styles, right? So what kind of thought do they have? Now there's the, the thought that, okay, I'll motivate employees by intimidating them. Now that's really old school. That's kind of the way things used to be. Uh, maybe when I started out, you know, working, or the school of thought could be, I'm going to motivate my employees by empowering them. So do you see which school of thought does this leader have? And we don't know who were their teachers. So that's the second area to consider. Who were their teachers? These leaders had leaders. They had people they had a report to. So if they worked for someone who wasn't a very good example, they might follow in those footsteps. They might think that is how you lead. Or they could say, well, I'm not going to be that way. You know, when I'm in a leadership role, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do things differently. Third is to consider this person's background, their upbringing. I don't believe that you live in a household for 18 years or 19 years and that you're not shaped by that environment. Regardless of who raised that person, if it, if it wasn't their parents, it could be grandparents. Um, it could be uh, caregivers, right? We don't know. But if you think about that, as they were growing up, they were shaped 
When I think about my parents, they were wonderful because they taught me that I could do things. They encouraged me. They inspired me. But what if this dragon leader was raised in a household where they were told, you can't do that, and what's wrong with you? And they were always getting picked on. Do you see what I'm saying? 18 years of hearing that would probably impact you. Most likely it is, unless you can really fight that. When we look at people, people are very complex. It's not just one thing. So when you think about that leader who maybe you perceive, you know, to have those dragon-like behaviors, you've got to think deeper. Look at the layers. The next question to ask yourself when it comes to leaders what is their communication style preference? This is a big one. And in another course, I go into depth with communication styles. Let's imagine that you feel like your leader isn't giving you enough information. I mean, that's the big complaint that I hear from employees. I don't get enough information. I don't get enough details. I don't get clear guidelines. I don't get specifics. And therefore, it's very frustrating. When we study styles, though, it can very much be that leader has a preferred communication style, just like I do. So let's walk through the styles quickly, and then I'll give you an example or two. So red is the first area, and I'm a strong red, actually. So that kind of communicator, they communicate big picture and they wanna receive information in the big picture. They're short and to the point. They're action-oriented. They do like facts, but not necessarily a lot of detail. And typically with the red, you should start out business-like with them, and then they'll let you know if they wanna get into the personal stuff. Blue is quite different. Blue can deal with abstract ideas. They don't need to know the one, two, three, four, five, six. You could give them one, three, and six, and their brain will connect the dots. They can work with abstract information. They love concepts. Um, I did say they connect the dots on their own. They're a more informal, casual style and they like to ask questions for understanding. Green is precise. They're analytical. The green style communicator wants guidelines. They want structure. They want deadlines. They love details. They need time to make a decision and they're logical. And then yellow is informal, casual. They put emphasis on human relationships. So when they're communicating, you want to think about the human element. They can tend to stray from the subject. A strong, dominant yellow will stray. They seek harmony, and they're empathetic. Now, the red and green are most alike in that they're fact-oriented, they're logical, but the big difference is red is quick to the point, action-oriented, green is slow to make a decision. Blue and yellow are similar in that they're informal and they're casual, but yellow, again, uh, likes to have more of the story around it and blue doesn't. What does this have to do with the dragon, the leader dragon? I'm a red style, correct? So for me, I'm not intentionally leaving out information when I give direction or I, I assign something to anyone on my team. And because I know I don't think of the details right away, I take time and effort to try to think of as many details as I can but I still don't think of everything. And sometimes I don't think of something till I see it, until I actually see it. 
For example, we create a lot of handouts when I do customized workshops. I like to create a handout that we give to the client and they give to the participants. So let's say my assistant Malia, I give her the handout and I just kind of sketch it out, big picture and my points and so forth. And then I tell Malia, now make it look good. You know, put our branding on it, polish it, make it look professional. And I just let her go, right? Now Malia is used to me by now, but in the early days, she would maybe come back with that handout, give it to me and I would say, oh, I forgot, Malia, I like the page number in the lower right hand corner. And um, I also forgot, I'd like to see a header on here. And oh, by the way, and then Malia could think, oh my gosh, why didn't you tell me this all up front, right? She's thinking I'm the dragon because I'm not, I didn't give her all the details. In my brain, I didn't see that. So again, whereas an employee, you might think, well, my my leader just doesn't give me enough information or they don't give me enough details or they don't give me enough guidance. It could be they have a preferred communication style. And how you can help is to balance that style.